This is my this is my spiel. Spiel 2.0. We wonder why there's trauma when we assign the memorization of 144 facts by what is I think widely agreed upon a developmentally arbitrary deadline. Um, how many people memorized the times tables when they were young? 144 facts, 12 by 12 grid. Any ideas why to 12 and not to another number? A foot, maybe 12 inches in a foot. Might explain why we're one of the only people who memorize it to 12. Because we're the, one of the only people who use feet. Uh, unless we're, unless we're going to go into... Do European kids only memorize to 10? I don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. I can't answer that with authority. I would. I hope so. My, my, I'm hoping my kids only memorize to 10. If they memorize beyond that, rock on. But what we don't want is a kid who can proudly tell you that 12 12s is 140. When they do. They do. Yeah. Memorize to 10. Yeah. They're metric, right? There we go. See, I forgot that we had our, our, our European red. <laughs> um, they proudly announce that, that 144 is 12 12s. And you ask them what 13 12s is, and they say, where's a pencil? And that's exactly what we don't want. If, if they can just go to, tw go to 12, and then they run out of steam, uh, then, we, well, then we haven't done our job. Uh, so I boiled it down, I think. Oh boy. This, isn't, I don't, I have, I, this might not work, I'm sorry to say. I boiled it down into a document that I call All the Multiplication You Need. Yeah, like I said, this is not my board. Ah, yes, wonderful. Um, we spend a lot of time talking about the rules of multiplying. And these are four that I think we can all agree on. That anything multiplied by zero is zero. Anything multiplied by one is itself. If you're multiplying by ten, just glue on a zero. We say glue on, and I say glue on instead of add because adding a zero can be a confusing phrase for kids. Uh, if multiplying by a hundred, glue on two zeros. And then the real whopper, multiplying by more than ten calls for the distributive property. The distributive property says that 13 of something is 10 of them plus 3 more of them. Uh, if you become flexible with the distributive property, you won't need to memorize anything beyond 10. You'll know that 15 of something is 10 of them plus half of itself, or 10 of them plus 5 more. Uh, in this document, which I'm going to be sending home probably numerous times uh, throughout the year, I took out uh, the, the commutative uh, rule is that if seven sixes is 42, then six sevens is also. I took out all the commutative duplicates uh, because we spend, a, we, we spend all of our time approaching multiplication with, almost all of our time, with arrays. We use geometry and rectangles to look at the space inside something. And just like number lines, you can have closed arrays and open arrays. With this, it's 36 facts. And these 36 facts can be used to solve any multiplication problem you'll ever be asked. Uh, within reason. If it's giant, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the algorithm. And that's what, we, what you were talking about, that eventually you're going to want to lay them out vertically. Um, I had a student, Christina, a couple years ago, whose father was Romanian and came up to the board at this point in my spiel and said, no, no, in Romania, this is how we do it. And he did something all completely horizontal that made perfect sense to me and was absolutely amazing. And I lost it moments later. And I keep asking his two daughters to come back and teach me, and they keep on saying, no, no, we don't do math with our dad anymore. He scares, he scares us. Um, very cool guy, though. All right. So anyway, 36 facts. And we look at our squares. We, we, I mean, these things I want people to know. I want people exposed to by the end of fourth grade. Uh, are they going to walk away with every fact? Maybe not. Are they going to have a lot of familiarity with using a times table? Definitely. It's a tool that we use all the time. Uh, I don't have an expectation that everyone's going to memorize all the facts. I don't think that's realistic. Um, but I do think that everyone's going to get a sense of counting by a number, skip counting, some people call it. That's Eudora the rat. Uh, this is all you need. And we spend a lot of time looking at why this is all you need. Uh, and to be honest, my 11s table and my 12s table of my youth have kind of melted away. And I can distribute, I can use the distributive properties to distribute factors faster than I could report something I memorized, especially if it's something in the 14s and I have to rack my brains. All right, so that's coming home. Any questions? Multiplication? As for the algorithm, we definitely get to the algorithm. And the good thing about the multiplication algorithm Oops, sorry. All right. Uh, the first line, the first thing we do, right? We all remember the algorithm. We Start here, multiply this by each thing. 2, 4 is 8. 
7 times 4 is 28, 8, carry the 2, that's when the kid starts grumbling, why are we carrying, this is that carrying thing again, uh, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Anyone know what this represents in the, in the, in the bigger problem, what this is the answer to? 4 times 372. Yeah, it's just this times that. And if we have 4 times 372, what do we need? 10 times 372. The vertical algorithm for multiplication is designed to set up an addition problem. It's designed purely to give us that vertical addition problem because that's the way kids, maybe before now, were, it, was the, it was the way to add. So then, there's this. That. The zero. Why do I put a zero there? Some people don't put a zero there. Some people leave it blank. Some people put a dash. And they do 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 3 is 3. This kills me. <laughs> if you came up in a dash placing or a, whoops, or a space leaving, please do me the favor and turn into a zero placer. Because that zero, having that zero there, I mean, we can look at this and say, well, that's 4 times 372. I want kids just as easily to say, well, that's 10 times 372. By the end of our hardcore multiplication push, I want kids to see that that's a 10. They don't need to go through it bit by bit. They know it's going to be 10 times 372. They can just write 3720. It's 372 with that zero glued on. Thinking about the problem before you even start is going to save you a lot of time. And you can tell the kids who do this because when they get to this stage of the problem, they start here. They know what it's going to be. They've already, they've already thought, ahead of, thought ahead of the problem. Rather than one, two, three, place the zero. Anyone, anyone want to put into words why that zero goes there? I love this. It's a great discussion. It's a number of tens. Right? So, what did you say? It's a, it's a number of tens. It's a number of tens, right? This is 372 tens or 10 372s. Anyone else? Put it in their own words. Last year someone said it's a placeholder. It's a placeholder. Make sure that I don't do that and put the 372 in the wrong place. Okay. The third rule. The third rule. Glue on a zero. Anything, anything times ten, glue on a zero. The third rule. All right. <clears throat> what about calculators?